Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting, well, rare and exotic whiskey. I have something called the Apogee 12 Pure Malt Whiskey. Oh, is that even allowed? Oh no, 2009, the Scotch Whiskey Association actually has a rule that says you cannot use that in the title. Because of concerns that con consumers were confused by the description pure malt, that description and deviations of it are prohibited in the labeling, packaging, advertising, or promoting of any Scotch whiskey. The prohibition relates only to the combination of the wor words pure and malt and derivatives such as pure as malt and does not prevent, for example, a reference to promotional literature and the use of pure water. Ooh, that's actually um, a quote from the Scotch Whiskey Regulations 2009. But wait, I have more. It says here, age 12 years, product of England. We're not in Scotland. They can use it. Yay. I don't know if they can sell it in America, but they can use it. Yay. All right. The summit of craftsmanship enhanced through additional maturation in ex bimber oak casks. All right, so what we have here is a, I'm gonna say beautiful bottle. So first of all, I have to get it out here. Look at this, they even wrapped it in tissue paper here. Wow, I haven't seen that for a while. All right, so very, very good. So tissue paper gone. So we actually see like the hammered copper pot still surface of bimber. Now, this over here in Europe costs about, at least in Germany, it costs 60, 59 euros and 90 cents. At the distillery, it's 49 pounds, 49.90. So 50 pounds, 60 euros. We do have a little bit of problem at the moment with our exchange rate and so on. This is 46.3%. We have 25,000 bottles of this. And this is, according to the press release, a pure malt today we used to say vatted malt now we say blended malt Johnny Walker green label yeah it's a blended malt scotch whiskey if we have blended scotch whiskey there's no malt that means there's grain if it's blended malt it's just a mixture of single malts together so what we have is a mixture of single malts together from the space side and from the highland region they brought down to England and then they further gave it a finish in their X bimber oak casks will i be able to notice the 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 influence of the ex bourbon um ex bimber um casks don't think so <laughs> i've had a few maybe five or less bimbers but i really really don't think that i can taste that cask finish influence bimber basically my personal opinion has been overrolled by their own success um, over here in Germany, we have when, when a new Bimber product comes on the market, we get somewhere up for the entire country of over 80 million people, we get between 200 and 600 bottles. And I buy directly from the importer, directly from the, in, the, um, the, in, the, um, the wholesaler, Kirsch Import, and it always or almost always says one bottle per customer. I'm not talking about one bottle per customer as in a... Uh, normal consumer, I'm talking about one bottle per online shop, one bottle per um, online uh, uh, whiskey retailer with a store, brick and mortar. We, as a seller of whiskey, I am included in that, um, we can only buy one single bottle. What do you do with a one single bottle? Do you actually take a picture of it and put it online and set everything up and then sell it for that normal price? No, it's not worth selling one bottle for that price. Too much effort. Someone walks in the store, you have a buddy, hey, you want to have a Bimber bottle? I got one. One. Or we use it in the tasting. All right, so that's what we can often do is we have a tasting. But unfortunately, uh, for the last two years, many, many times of the year, many months of the year, it was not allowed to do and give tasting. So, ah. Uh, so very, very big problem. So Bimber, overrolled by their own success, has now said, hey, we're going to do something with 25,000 bottles. So we're going to actually put something out on the market, get distribution, get a little bit of that work, work set up there, make some money doing that, and put that on the, on the market. This bottle should cost around 40 euros, in my personal opinion. This is a blended malt whiskey. Um, they say pure malt, and it should be around 40 euros. Why do I say that? Well, 
because this costs about 40 euros over here in Germany still. So this is the price I would normally pay for a 12 year old 46.5, I'm sorry, 46.3% um, whiskey, non chill filtered and no artificial coloring. So that's what I would go for. All right, that'd be my price point. This on the other hand is 60 euros. Why can this be 60 euros? Well, there's two reasons for that. Reason number one, is because it's bimber you're going to pay about an extra 20 euros for that and reason number two is maybe packaging as a wonderful new bottle you're going to pay eight euros for this probably more than a normal bottle like this and um, nice packaging and um, a little bit of marketing there so if you take a look at the two colors you're going to see not much difference at all all right both of these are natural color both of these are non-chilled filtered 46 percent 46.3 percent 40 euros 60 euros All right, on the nose, what do I get? Um, I get honey. <laughs> I like this. Whiskey Basin 197255. It's a 12 year old um, whiskey. <sighs> honey. Sugar. It's a very sweet whiskey. It's almost, I, I like sweet. It's almost too sweet for my personal palate. It's very, very delicious. So the official tasting notes was, um, this offers a balance with additional flavors or layers of flavors and complexity derived from the vivid fruit and spice forward character of the ex bimber casks. I would have loved, now I know it's too expensive and it's just not very practical. I would have loved to have this plus a little tiny sample of um, the liquid without the ex without the bimber cask influence. So I could actually taste that difference there, a little bit of a um, deconstruction set going on there. So bimber says we source some of the finest single malt whiskeys from both the Highlands and Speyside, and these whiskeys were matured for a minimum of 12 years before being enhanced further through our skillful, meticulous blending and an additional maturation in ex-bourbon casks that were previously used to age Bimber's award-winning London single malt whiskey. All right, so pears, apricots, caramel. I, it's almost like I'm in a rose garden. It's very flower floral. I like, very, very nice. This on the other hand, It's got a little bit of a darker moment. It has a little bit of that copper, a little bit of a sulfur moment. Tiny, tiny, minim, minimal. Um, this has this just sweetness, 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 sweet fruits. All right. Cheers. Toffee, sweetness, honey, malt, stewed apples and pears. It's almost a little bit like an apple pie. There's a little bit of cinnamon going on in there, a little bit of toffee going in there. That floral moment is still there. I'm still in that rose garden. Um, it's nice. This is a C plus whiskey. Tiny little bit of caramel and some milk chocolate going on in there as well. Um, but very fruity, very um, uh, orange. Mm, orange, yeah. C plus, value for money, C minus. It's just 20 euros too expensive. Now, um, this has been on the shelves for three months, at least in Europe, and it's not gone. Why not? It should be a hyper, hyper Bimber whiskey. Over here in Germany, Bimber disappears before it even hits the shelves. But this is not Bimber. This is only finished in Bimber casks. And it is a good whiskey. Very nice. Very well created. But there's a tiny little bit of white pepper at the end as well. But just the name Bimber won't sell these bottles. These bottles will be sold by people or bought by people who go, all right, I've tried the whiskey someplace else, maybe during a whiskey tasting, maybe due to a sample, maybe I was at a whiskey fair and I was like, oh, I like that. 
My problem is I would go for a Glenfiddich 15-year-old Solera, for example, or the Glenfiddich 12 every day of the week. It's actually much, much cheaper. I can get almost three bottles of Glenfiddich 12 for one of these than this. Are they almost comparable? Yes. Is it worth twice or three times the price? No. And that's a little bit of my problem here. But hey, if we want to support new brands and we want to support new um, companies and we want to give them our money for a product that was made in Scotland and only finished in X bimber casks, go for it. Be my guest. But remember, I gave it a C- minus for value for money. All right, so a tiny little nip of this. It's a little bit very biased. I love Craig Gallagher. I love Craig Gallagher 17 more. One of the best whiskeys out there for value for money. Um, better than the 23 for value for money, my personal opinion, even in taste. Sorry to say that, people. Um, but I just really, really adore that flavor profile that I'm given here. So that's why it's having a tough time beating this. C+. Plus. Good, good grade with mine. A, why haven't you bought it? B, buy it. C, you can buy it if you like. D, don't need to buy it. F, why was it even made? Thank you very much for watching, subscribing, sharing, and telling others about this crazy guy over here in uh, Germany tasting whiskeys you might not ever see. Often the comparison whiskey, yes, but I don't know if this will ever reach the shores of America due to the pure on the label, so we'll see what happens. All the best. See you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, question of the day, I forgot. What is your favorite blended malt? What is your favorite pure malt? What is your favorite vatted malt? Whatever description you'd like to give the mixing of single malts together without the addition of grain whiskey, what is your favorite product? Bye-bye.